It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And believe it or not, it is, what is the date today? The 29th. The 29th of January in Chula Vista, California. And it's in the 80s, clear skies. It's just, it's crazy weather, it's so warm. Side note, anywho, um, this is a garden, one of the first succulent gardens that I ever installed way back in the day and this is the first time we have done a major kind of renovation after all of these years succulents like any other plant over time you know can get rangy leggy sometimes look a little unintentional and where all of my intricate rock work really helps to kind of solidify and add permanence to a design you know sometimes it just don't work no mo so here is a perfect example when I first designed this area, it was mounded. <laughs> I don't know where all the soil went, but it's flat now. And they're just, you know, we have Portolacaria afrovirigata planted here that was getting way too close to the drive. So you can see how we dug it all up. I'm just moving it. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do something else here. This, stand, this was a stand of sticks on fire that was about five times this size that we that we dug up, cut up for parts, and reset. But I feel like I can do better here. So I went up to Waterwise and I ordered some things for delivery. I'm getting a big, gorgeous, 24 inch boxed Aloe Hercules for this area right here. See, no wires, no trees, so that Hercules can just grow and grow and grow and be fabulous. Very excited about that. Idea here being, um, to get rid of all of the non-succulent plants, there were some things that were lingering through the years the client was kind of loath to part with, like uh, Leptospermum, Loripetalum, um, some philodendron -y kind of things, but and bamboo, and it was just a maintenance nightmare. So she finally relented and said, let's get rid of it. So the garden already looks better, just having gotten rid of all that stuff. Check this out. This Crassula undulata, you can see it has been dug out. Not quite sure why the guys just left it sit here, but anywho, it's huge and gorgeous. But we need things at this sidewalk, bed, in the sidewalk bed that are more low profile. So this is another example of a really beautiful plant that's outgrown its space. So this guy is gonna get moved back um, somewhere else in the garden where it can be appreciated a little better. Here's all the crap that we pulled out of the garden, all the non-succulent stuff that was just always in need of fertilizing and watering and clipping back and tipping and thinning and ugh, we got, finally got rid of it. And if you look out through the garden, you never miss it. It just, it looks so much better now. Stuff can breathe. So I am pulling some of the plant material that was a bit overgrown or you know, I have a lot of undulata or Crassula argentea sunset. I remember when I installed this garden the first time that I was all about that plant. Oh, it was so exciting. And I still love it, but let's face it, it's not exactly a specimen. So a lot of the um, Argentias are gonna be rehomed. I got some really cool stuff at Waterwise Botanicals this morning, uh, some variegated, the client loves variegation, who doesn't? So variegated agave, variegated aloes, some euphorbias, um, orgialis, bracteus, uh, lots of bromeliads and some shade loving stuff to um, replace some of these common ordinary things with. This vignette is still really awesome. We've got aloe cameronii, aloe, it looks like just a little dwarf, maybe Crosby's prolific down there. A really tight little barrel cactus and a sticks on fire, all nestled amongst a gorgeous boulder. Uh, over here, we had done two treatments. First we did uh, a treatment with flagstone. We laid weed barrier fabric then we set down the stones, then we filled the joints, 
with Palm Springs Gold 3 8 inch. And that has just done great. But through here, because this is the garden space, we decided that we wouldn't do the weed fabric or the Palm Springs Gold and we would plant Diamondia in the joints. And it was really beautiful for a couple of years, but it became really difficult to keep the weeds out of it. So we pulled up all the flagstone and we're gonna do the same treatment we did here through the garden path. Again, the idea being, you know, to reduce maintenance, more sustainability. Ah, look at this. This is one of my, um, my tree stump planters. It's got a, a real lovely weed in it. Get that out here. We got a little euphorbia snowflake in here. And there was a Laura Petalum growing in this spot right here that was just dwarfing this whole area and causing this guy not to get any light. So he looks a little weak and, and discouraged. So I think now that he's more forefront, he's gonna be beautiful. All kinds of, look at this Sansevieria. Mother-in-law's tongue. This is another one that runs amok, doesn't it? I started with about three of these and now I have 300. <laughs> Look at them in these planters over here. <laughs> Yikes! Oh gosh, so I'm going to be taking all these planters apart and just redoing them. I'll, I'll still use the Aeoniums and the Sansevieria and, and the Bromeliads, but I'm gonna tighten these things up because they just look totally run amucky. And then this was a tapestry in here. This is pretty shady and a little bit challenging. And you know, it's just lost its luster. And the client wants to get away from the tapestry and just go more with specimen plants. So I'll be pulling in more rock and some specimens in here for interest. All right, the Nandinas, this is not a succulent, it's an Andina. It's one of the compact or, or dwarf varieties and I love it. This is, I haven't touched it in 10 years. I mean, this just it sits here and looks fabulous. It's variegated, it's interesting, it's clean, it's non-invasive, so it gets to stay. You'll notice in this garden there are a few of those. We had Golden Goddess Bamboo flanking the driveway, which at the time seemed like a good idea, but again, it was just, because it's so warm here year round, it was maintenance, 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 maintenance. It was so harsh. So we got rid of it and the client loves the look and the idea of it. And I've already got Petalanthus growing in other places. So we're going to do standard uh, heavenly bamboo for height and do some of the lower variegates uh, of the heavenly bamboo around it. So this is day one of what we anticipate being a three-day project. Tune in tomorrow for updates and more. This has been Laura Eubanks reporting for Design for Serenity in Chula Vista, California with your succulent tip of the day.